order. You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man. We're going to break away and take you live to Jersey after this inquiry report into historical child sexual abuse was published earlier. We can listen in. I'm sorry to all those who suffered abuse in our island over the years. We are here today because children have been abused, because our island's institutions failed children and their families. We failed children who needed our care, who needed to be protected and listened to. Too often, children were not believed. Unpalatable truths were swept under the carpet because it was the easiest thing to do. I am deeply sorry. We did not do what we should have done. People cared more for the status quo, for a quiet life, than for children. Those institutional failings do not excuse those individuals who abused and hurt children or colluded in their pain. And I will not defend them. This inquiry is heard from hundreds of people I'd like to thank those who spoke of their own difficult childhood experiences. I know that it was hard for them to do so. The telling of their stories will help others to understand how they suffered. It will help us to acknowledge what happened in our community. I'm speaking today from the Jersey Archive, which will house the enquiry records. The Archive is the repository of our island's collective memory. It tells the story of who we are and where we have come from. Our failings and the hurt suffered are part of that story. What people have told the enquiry and what people have done cannot be forgotten. We heard this afternoon from the chair of the inquiry, Francis Oldham, who said that for many children, our institutions proved to be ineffectual and neglectful. The inquiry highlights 10 fundamental failings in Jersey's care system including, most importantly, the failure to listen to children. I am shocked, I am saddened, and I am sorry. This report rams home some cold, hard, brutal truths. Over decades, too many children failed by too many people. And it highlights the so-called Jersey way. And yes, the report warns that some children in our care may still be at risk. I will not rest until we have done all that we can do to change that. I accept every recommendation and pledge to build a new culture. One which puts children first every time. Where one child failed is one too many. One which is open to all ideas and expertise, wherever they come from. While the inquiry has been working, we have not stopped. We have made additional resources available embarked on a major programme of service improvement and enhanced our ability to work together across different services. But we know that we still need to do much more. We need to do better 
and we will. People have been let down and I am sorry for that. Children should never have been abused. They should not have been failed, but they were. Now, my priority is to take action to help ensure that no child suffers such abuse in the future. As you appreciate, uh, we have not had much time to consider the full detail of the report, uh, but if there are any uh, questions that you would like to ask uh, at this time, uh, then I would be pleased to answer them. Martin Brunt from Sky News. Um, we talk about this um, largely as something that happened in the past, yet you acknowledge what the chairman said, chair said about kids still at risk. You've known about the widespread nature of this problem for several years. Why are there still children at risk? The report says that there may still be children at risk, and even that may, for me, is too much. And I will not rest whilst the report is being written. Uh, we have invested millions of pounds in improving our services. We have recruited permanent heads to children's services from the United Kingdom. We undertook independent audits by UK individuals to help us move forward. For us, even the May is not acceptable and we want to build a service where children uh, are properly looked after, where they are properly considered uh, and cared for and loved as if they were our own children. Um, you say that you accept the recommendations, does that mean that they will report in? Uh, I have been quite clear in saying that I accept the recommendations and I will work with fellow ministers and the State's Assembly to get them approved. We will now undertake a piece of work uh, to look at the financial resources, the human resources that are needed to deliver those recommendations. But I am committed to delivering them. We cannot allow the decades of abuse that took place to continue. Chris Rainey, BBC Radio Chase, does that mean now that this is your number one priority and will be the number one priority of your government? It does. I accept the recommendations. The chairman was quite clear in that she said that those recommendations need to be worked on as a community uh, and they needed to be consulted upon. And I will not only be consulting with ministers and the assembly, but also the wider community, together with care leavers. And if the desire is to demolish that building and put in its place a modern building fit for the future that provides facilities for young people, probably in a recreational setting, uh, then I'm committed to delivering that. Senator Gorse, do you acknowledge that in the past, changes in law, changes in policy in, in terms of child protection and children's services <coughs> have fallen behind other considerations inside, and such as the <coughs> finance industry? I was asked about this when I appeared before the inquiry in phase three. And I today have been quoted as saying that I think that is unfair. I say that in context. Historically, I accept that other things, rather than protection of children and legislation to protect children, has played, uh, has been secondary compared to other legislation. Since 2011, when I was first appointed as Chief Minister uh, and we had a new Health Minister, the amount of social legislation and provision that we have delivered on, uh, I think far outweighs the legislation that we provided for uh, financial services. We've taken a bond. The first time this island's ever borrowed to ensure that housing is up to UK decent home standards, something that the chairman spoke about in her report today. Uh, we've uh, created a new mental health and capacity uh, law. We've created a new care commission. I could go on and on. Historically, 
we have not prioritised appropriately social legislation. I think I've got a, re a good record that I can stand on that I have. But you say it's your priority to acknowledge these recommendations and take on these recommendations and accept them. How difficult do you think that task will be to get the rest of the states and your ministers to agree to that? Today has been a difficult day. None of us have really had time to read all of the stories of those who've suffered over the decades. But I know it will be harrowing reading. And I ask every member of our community to read this public inquiry report. And I believe, having read those stories, that actually that will galvanise people into action, to providing the money, to saying we will recruit the people uh, that are needed. Because we have to make sure together that this does not happen into the future. Sorry. What message would you give to the children who are currently in care on the island today? You may be digesting this report. We have not forgotten you. You are at the forefront of our mind. We are sorry if we have got it wrong uh, in the past. If you have concerns today that you want to raise with me, or with any minister, or with any member of the states, that's our parliament, do so. We stand ready to listen. We stand ready to support you. You are our child. We see you as part of our family. I believe that by having this fully independent inquiry, which was a first for Jersey, yes, uh, the states agreed the terms of reference that I presented to them. Yes, the states agreed the financial resource, but the inquiry itself was independent. They took as long as they needed. They had a budget uh, that was not constrained because changing that culture and allowing independent assessment of where we've come from, where we are, and by the recommendations of where we need to get to into the future, I think is a really important step in changing that culture. But the report itself says that the former health minister brought in a UK interim director of social services and it was her work and her audits undertaken by a UK uh, professional that started to lead to the change that the report says there are some more hopeful signs about where the service is. I am absolutely sure that the recommendations that the uh, inquiry make about independent inspectors, about appropriate oversight, about the uh, inquiry team coming back in two years' time again independently to assess the work that's been undertaken will mean that that culture will change. Chief Minister of Jersey there, Ian Gorst, responding to today's inquiry findings into child abuse in the island's care system, historical child abuse in the island's care system. He said that we failed children who needed our care. He said too much was swept under the carpet and there has been a failure in general to listen 
to children. He also said he accepts every recommendation and will adopt a new culture on the island. It's a report that is hundreds of pages long and it catalogues the abuse and humiliation of children in Jersey for decades. Crucially, the independent Jersey care inquiry says children may still be at risk. It recommends that the children's home at the centre of the scandal, Oak de la Garange, should be demolished. More than 600 witnesses gave evidence describing a culture of indifference in which children were abandoned in the care system. Robert Hall is in Jersey for us this evening. Robert. George, hundreds of islanders have awaited today for much of their adult lives, a day when their suffering has been acknowledged and a day when independent voices have identified failures that led to sexual, physical and mental abuse. This is a summary of the report which accuses Jersey of failing its children. Children trapped in establishments with abusive carers and little access to outside help. In the last half hour, Jersey's government has acknowledged those failures and apologised again. It says it will act on every recommendation the report has put forward. I used to be woken up some nights with screaming from the boys. They put death hole in my mouth. He hung himself. He was only 14. Don't say anything to anybody. The island of Jersey, proud and independent, but according to the report, an island whose attitude to children in the care system was indefensible. Chair Francis Oldham said children had been abandoned in a system with no regard to their rights or needs. Her panel had identified what she termed the Jersey way. In its most favourable light, this expression is said to refer to the maintenance of proud and ancient traditions and the preservation of the island's way of life. Using the expression in a pejorative way, it is said to involve the protection of powerful interests and resistance to change, even when change is patently necessary. Allegations of abuse in Jersey came to public prominence during police operations at this former children's home. The search for human remains at Haute de la Garenne was inconclusive, but the images spurred islanders who'd kept their secrets for so long to come forward. Madeline, who's written a book about her experiences, wants to remain anonymous. I was in care from the age of three months and it went on till I was nearly 17. Awful experiences um, of abuse, uh, being locked in a cell for days on end, um, beatings, uh, being forced down in the bath, uh, practically I thought I was going to die then. The accounts of abuse involved homes large and small throughout the island. At this one, Blanche Pierre, house parents beat children and filled their mouths with soap. At La Preference, children were forced onto a vegetarian diet and punished for eating meat. They didn't report abuse because they didn't think they'd be believed. The panel said children of all ages had been powerless for decades. How was it? but an attitude or an ethos was allowed to develop that enabled so many children, vulnerable children, to be abused whilst in care. It's a devastating read. The panel said Jersey's children were still at risk. Even in newer homes, they were not receiving the care and support they needed. The report acknowledges that progress has been made, but it calls for urgent action to end fear and mistrust. Haute de la Garenne, say the panel, should be torn down. Kids that were in the home with me that are no longer here, you know, deceased through alcohol and drugs. And for the ones that remain, I'm very pleased. Robert Hall, BBC News, Jersey. Not simply a story of systemic failures past. Abuse inside Jersey's care system could still be happening today. A long-awaited report into hundreds of shocking claims of abuse and mistreatment has found that for decades, children were left powerless, effectively abandoned in the care system. It branded the authorities an ineffectual and neglectful substitute parent for children in care and declared that the notorious Haute de la Garenne home should be demolished. From Jersey, here's Paul McNamara. For decades, it stood as a reminder to many who lived there of the abuses they suffered within. Today, a public inquiry has recommended the solid Victorian walls of this former children's home be torn down. In 2008, police first swept into Haute de la Garenne investigating historic child abuse. 
Almost a decade later, an inquiry has concluded hundreds of children in care were abused across the whole of Jersey, an authority the review called a neglectful substitute parent. It is without doubt and of incalculable regret that children have been failed whilst in the care of the states of Jersey. Unquote. Those failings impacted upon children who were already at a disadvantage, whether through family circumstances, a crime committed against the child, or even a crime committed by the child. For many children who were removed from home situations deemed harmful or unsatisfactory, the states of Jersey proved to be an ineffectual and neglectful substitute parent. The abuse goes back decades. Jean Neal spent her childhood at the Grooville Home for Girls. On the way to the home, I was told that anything that happened in the home, you don't tell anybody at all. If you went the bed, they would put stinging nettles in the bed. No nightwear. And that was to train you. My question is, and always has been, where were the authorities and what were they doing? Jean's experience was far from unique. The inquiry heard from more than 600 witnesses over three years. It found there were failures at all levels of children's services and hundreds of children were subjected to degrading punishments, including physical and sexual abuse. For many survivors of Jersey's troubled past, this report offers something they once never thought possible simply to be believed. Well, the truth has come out, um, and that's, that's important to me, because we weren't believed before, and now we believe. Did you try saying at the time? Yes, at the time I did. We used to run away from the home, only to be locked up when we got there, because they had like two cells in the home, you see. Um, and we would be put in there for hours, days even. The criticisms in this £23 million inquiry are wide-ranging and span decades. But despite this entire process, there are still concerns. Right at the end of the inquiry, it found that some aspects of child services were not fully fit for purpose and concluded that some children here in Jersey may still be at risk. What the inquiry has identified is a failing at government level and management level. There's been a failure from top to bottom and that has created a sadly and unfortunately uh, an ethos or a culture where children, vulnerable children, came to be abused. And what is particularly upsetting is to see that this problem is probably still here in 2017. So what now for this island idyll so mired in scandal? The report has eight key recommendations, including appointing an independent commissioner for children, change to the whole legislation system to centre on the child, and a culture shift to focus on the most needy instead of the international image of this island abroad. Paul McNamara with that report. Well, I'm joined now from St Helier by Jersey's Chief Minister, Senator Ian Gorst. Thanks for coming on the programme. I mean, this is a truly shameful and shocking report. Um, can you give us assurances that these abuses are not happening today? Uh, firstly, let me say uh, that I am sorry to all of those individuals who suffered abuse in Jersey at the hands of Jersey's institutions for decades. You're right, the report does say uh, that children may still be at risk and that is unacceptable. It's one of the reasons why we uh, set up the fully independent public inquiry so that we could learn what had happened, so we could hear people's stories, so that they could be put at the centre of the improvements right. that I have committed myself to today on delivering those recommendations. But, but you took over in 2011. You've been Chief Minister now for six years. The report mentioned that aspects of Jersey services for children remain not fully fit for purpose in June 2016. You'd already been in office for five years when this was written. So how is that possible given the history, the shameful history of children's services on your island? 
We've been on a path to improvement. Back in 2015, uh, we brought in from the United Kingdom uh, an interim head of social services uh, and we asked her to do four independent audits, again done by somebody from the United Kingdom. Those audits uh, did say that services were not up to standard and since then we've been putting in many millions of pounds uh, having proper independent review uh, but this report says that there are still improvements, uh, big improvements that we need to make. And it's important to listen to the stories of those who suffered today so that we as a government, we as a parliament, we as a community can hear what happened in our island and dedicate ourselves right. to ensuring that we deliver on those recommendations. I get all that, but it should have happened before. We've known about this for years. You've been there since 2011. You, you started improving things in 2015. Four years, basically, in which not much happened. That's just too long. It's unacceptable, isn't it? Uh, I brought forward uh, the recommendations for this public inquiry into historic child abuse. Uh, that was uh, in 2012. I came uh, to office late in 2011. Uh, the Jersey Parliament agreed those terms of reference, uh, provided a budget. Uh, this has been a fully right. independent inquiry. I have supported it from uh, when the Parliament agreed it. I've uh, argued for increased uh, budget and I've argued for them to take longer than they initially thought right. because I want to see that culture change. Okay. I want to see our services improve so that what's happened for decades since the post-war era does not happen again into the future. Okay, so and when, it's been important. Give me a date. When will children be safe in Jersey in these care homes? Well, this report says that children may still be at risk. That's not acceptable. For me, it's not acceptable that one child is at risk. But we need to come together as a community, as a parliament, as a government, to dedicate ourselves to changing the culture that led to this decades of abuse mm. so that children are cared for as if they were members of our own family into the future. I have committed today to doing that. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to see this inquiry right. set up. Whilst the inquiry's been working, we have, of course, as I've said, been spending many millions of pounds more, uh, bringing in independent audits, okay. but we've got more to you've do. Got, OK, you've made your point. Thank you very much, Ian Gorse. Thanks a lot. It is hard to comprehend how so many on Jersey have carried for so long the secret pain of their abuse, how those secrets wrecked marriages, caused depression, alcoholism and drug addiction, and how it must now feel to finally hear the truth acknowledged and exposed. The report into the Jersey care scandal calls for the notorious children's home, Haute de la Garenne, to be torn down. It also calls for the code of silence, which became known as the Jersey Way, to be similarly dismantled, as if brick by brick. To protect children, the report warns, even after all these decades, may still be at risk. For decades, this small island harboured widespread child abuse. Care homes responsible for the most vulnerable of children failed to protect them. Under their care, many of society's most powerless faced physical and sexual abuse. Jean recalls the cruel and degrading punishments and the fear she felt as a four-year-old. I was told that anything that happened in the home you don't tell anybody at all because nobody will ever believe you. And if you do let it slip out and tell anybody, the punishment is you'll have your hair, your tongue cut out. At night, if you wet the bed, they would put stinging nettles in the bed. No nightwear. And that was to train you. The judge leading the inquiry warned an expression known as the Jersey Way revealed a culture where abuse was ignored. We explore what is referred to as the Jersey Way. Using the expression in a pejorative way, it is said to involve the protection of powerful interests and resistance to change, even when change is patently necessary. 
Haute de la Garenne, the children's home at the centre of this scandal, became known as the House of Horrors. The police investigation here in 2008 led to many victims coming forward. Today's report recommends it now be demolished. The inquiry spoke to 450 former residents of Jersey's care system and found many instances of physical and sexual abuse of children from the 1940s until the turn of the millennium. Children's homes on the island were found to be uninspected for decades, run by untrained staff. It concluded that children may still be at risk, with lessons from the past still not learned. Whilst this report has been written, brought in independent experts from the United Kingdom to audit our services and to make recommendations, and I commit myself to delivering on the recommendations of this independent public inquiry. It's taken decades for people like Jean to feel they're finally being heard, but the suffering will last a lifetime. Some of the girls got pregnant, they would get, you know, um, for... Uh, the baby taken away from them. And my question is, and always has been, where were the authorities and what were they doing? While this inquiry may never result in justice for many victims, it's finally exposing the sickening truth that's haunted them for so long. And Sally's live on Jersey tonight. And indeed, what happens next there, Sally? What comfort, what compensation might there be for those who suffered so dreadfully? Well, tonight, authorities have accepted responsibility, Julie, and Jersey's chief minister has apologised in full, agreeing to accept the 600 recommendations made in today's damning report. But you only have to think about the people who are subjected to this unthinkable abuse at such a young age to know that lives have been ruined here. The report made for very difficult reading at times today. It went into detail about children who came into the care system at just weeks old and spent their entire childhood in a system that didn't protect them, that didn't give them a voice to speak out. And that, as one witness put it, where children were simply not their priority. For many of those children, it's had devastating consequences. For survivors, it's suffering they've carried all their lives. But for many victims, it's not about seeking compensation. Today was about being believed. It was about the authorities finally listening to them. Many feel that's happened. And the hope is now that the situation will improve here in Jersey so the children of tomorrow are properly protected. Sally, thank you.